and I'm going to say, hey, YouTube, how's it going? Um, thanks for joining us today. It's Wednesday, and we're going to try to get into the weeds a little bit on this um, self-portrait value study project that we are doing. Hopefully by now we've developed a value scale. This is the artifact that we're going to use uh, as a studio tool. And I, now I want to talk about actually trying to develop the uh, selfie, self-portrait that you might be using to, to create your drawing with. And so um, I've got some things that I'm going to do a, a screen share with to talk about a little bit. And we'll just see if we can uh, share some of these things. Yes, we can. I was outside this morning um, trying to uh, play with the idea of lighting and stuff. So I was using the golden hour concept. Um, I was out there. Um, the clouds were nice, so I wasn't getting harsh highlights on my face. But I've still got, you know, I've still got issues with my face. Anyway, the thing is, when you're trying to take a selfie, um, it's about photography and how to make a, a portrait, a self-portrait that is flattering. So this is not a very flattering angle on my face. I'm holding the, the camera, the phone down low and shooting up my nose. And of course, that means that we get to see lots and lots of jowls and lots and lots of neck and everything. And nobody wants to see that. So um, I want to tell you that, you know, holding your phone down below and shooting up at your face may not be the greatest idea. And you guys all know that already. I'm going to try the screen share again. So let's try it this way. Holding the phone way up over your head and shooting down on your face and head is not necessarily the greatest thing. I mean, maybe if you've got bitchin' hair that is just wonderful and everybody loves it, that's great. My hair is not really very flattering. And so this is not a super flattering angle to take a picture of myself at. So don't do that. I'm trying to find an angle to hold the phone so that I can, you know, do something that's somewhat uh, of a good flattering angle and pose and everything else. I'd like it not to be straight onto the camera. I'd like my face a little bit um, angled away from the camera, what we call a three-quarter view face, where we can see some of the side of the nose, as well as some of the front of the nose, some of the side of the mouth, as well as the front of the mouth. Um, and so in this one, I'm not angled quite far enough away, and I've got a pretty sour look on my face, so we could improve on that. But otherwise, what we've got here, and we can see the cursor on the screen here, is that I've got the light source is over here, and the light is coming in from the right side of the composition, illuminating the right sides of all of these forms. And so we're going to be really interested in that. We're going to be looking for the highlights, the really bright highlights, like on the uh, temple here, on the side of the nose, and this piece of nose cartilage right here has a highlight on it. Ooh, that's nice. We're going to be looking for your cheeks or cheekbones. Some of you have cheeks, and some of the rest of us don't have cheekbones. Some of us just have cheeks. So these are the smile lines that kind of define the two sides of the face. We're going to be looking for the entire shadow that's happening on that smile line. The lit portion of the cheek, perhaps even trying to find a highlight in the middle of that lit portion. The uh, shadow edge where it's kind of diffused as it goes around the, the rounded form. So it's a diffused shadow edge. And then the dark portion of the shadow on the underside that's away from the light. So we're going to be looking for that. Even on the shaded side of the face, we're going to be looking for light and then diffused shadow edge and then shadow. And we're going to be looking for those three parts of a form uh, and how they're illuminated. We're also going to be looking on the, on the back side of forms for reflected light and other kinds of things that might give us just a little bit more enhancement of the form so that um, you know we are paying attention to all of these critical little details that help the portrait really pop. And so um, taking the, the photograph um, in the golden hour of either the morning or the afternoon, you know, two hours after sun, sunrise or two hours before sunset gives you the best kind of um, uh, lighting situation for the face. So having done all that, what am I going to do? Oh, I should go back in there and play with one because I just wanted to show you this. Um, I'm looking at the class. And I'm going to ask you guys how many of you have done things um, using the uh, 
photo editing software where you've cropped a photograph or I've just got one hand up so far, or whether you've uh, bumped up the lighting or bumped down the lighting or vignetted the photograph or anything like that. I've got a couple of hands up now. So some people have done that kind of thing. So let's go back to screen share and grab just one of these awful images and play with it just a little bit. So this is in, um, uh, where can I, can I grab this and move this? I can't really, okay. Ah. And I can't move that, can I? I can't, okay. I must be able to move this. Yes, I can move it so that I can get to the tools up here. So if I get to these tools, I like to go to edit and create. This is a Microsoft Word product. This is the photo editor that they have. And so you can start by editing the thing. And in the edit mode, you have crop and rotate. You've got filters that you can apply and you've got some adjustments you can make. And I usually just use the crop and the adjustments tool. So I'm gonna use the crop tool, which is already highlighted here and um, pull this in and pull it down to try to create a much more of a uh, portrait. So that this is the kind of composition we're going to be looking for on your uh, Bristol board or eight and a half by 11 uh, photograph. And so if you can crop in like this to get your face relatively big, and is anybody asking a question back here? Um, um, and it's uh, usually a portrait is head and shoulders. And so we wanted about, you know, this much of the composition. And, you know, just trying to figure out um, whether you want the image centered in the composition or whether you want to you know, pull it left or right a little bit to create a little bit more um, tension uh, in the composition. That's kind of an artistic um, thing and that's kind of up to you, but you can kind of see that as I pull the thing left or right in the compositional space, it does create a slightly different view of the thing and all of that. So I'm going to save this <coughs> and then go into the adjustments part of this and over here if i can get this out of the way i can i can push up the light and i can increase the light or i can de decrease the lighting so if it's it's overexposed or underexposed i can compensate for that with using this slider right here um, color i don't really even want color can i get something that's in black and white um uh, go back I'm going to push this back into the middle for now. Clarity, if, if, it's, um, if it's pixelated, if it's out of focus, if the camera was moving or something, you can shove this up to try to get sharper details. Um, it's not super flattering because sometimes all you get is a whole bunch of um, uh, defects in your face, which is not always good. The vignetting um, thing is a really nice feature because it darkens the corners which kind of places the, the visual emphasis then on the middle of the composition, placing the middle, the emphasis on your face, which is really kind of nice. So you can use vignette if you want. Red Eye, I thought there was a thing here where I could put this into black and white. Filter, uh, filter, there's gotta be, sure, here's a black and white filter, not really. Um, is there anything else? Denim, mercury, God, vanilla. Yeah, I like vanilla. Okay, anyway, of the filters, there's several of them that will apply a grayscale to your um, thing. And that's kind of helpful to us because grayscale is very close to being what our um, drawing is going to be like. So if you've got a printout hard copy of this in a grayscale, it's really going to help you figure out where the highlights and the shadows and the shadow edges are in your composition. It's easier to see it in black and white than it is in color. So when we're really looking for some of these more subtle highlights and lighted portions of the composition, these are all, I'm gonna show you, uh, they're gonna be shapes. And we're gonna to try to look at them in terms of shapes in the composition and outline them in terms of shapes when we're actually uh, tracing this onto the Bristol board. And then we're going to be trying to, um, you know, 
divide these uh, out from the, the shadowed edges and the shadow shapes. So we're gonna be trying to find the shadow shapes and the highlight shapes in the entire composition, and it'll be wonderful. You save a copy, you print it out on a printer, and it'll be fantastic. It would also be fantastic if you saved this copy as a JPEG onto a thumb drive so that you have a, a copy of it, a file copy as a JPEG on a thumb drive. You can bring it in here, slap it into this computer and project it onto the screen behind me and be able to um, trace it uh, using the digital projector. The alternative um, is to use a sunny window and to be able to just put the image, tape it up on the window with a couple pieces of tape and then tape your um, Bristol board over the top of it. And you think that the Bristol board is really opaque and that the image won't come through, but it actually in a sunny window, it will come sh shining right through. And we could you know, trace everything right through the Bristol board from your uh, black and white image and we're golden, we, we can work that way. So in the next several days, either by Friday or by Monday, I'm asking you guys to be able to take the selfie, um, play with it a little bit, even just in Microsoft Image Viewer, um, and, and then print it out. Yeah, I need a printed out hard copy on eight and a half by 11 paper so that we've got a big, big size uh, portrait of your head and shoulders that we can use um, in this composition. Um, what am I gonna do? Am I gonna show any of the rest of that stuff today? Um, I could. Uh, it's not really the next thing is to actually trace the image onto the bristol board and i don't i can't do that here so i'm gonna i'm gonna stop this for now i'm gonna I, i'm going to hit end and i'm gonna say goodbye youtube i'll talk to you guys later